and welcome back to our coverage of the North American Summer Split. We're jumping right into the games with our first battle, Curse versus Team Dignitas. This is a matchup where both teams absolutely have something to prove. Yeah, and Curse came out of Super Week with a lot of momentum and things were looking up for them. But last week they lost to the two bottom ranked teams. And one of those was that 80 minute marathon loss to Complexity. They really have to pick themselves up and get the win back in their sails yeah. if they want to hold on to their playoff spot. Riff. And for Dignitas, they are in a four game slump, as we were saying, and sitting the lowest they've been in the standings this split. Yeah, I think Dig quickly became used to being on the top of the standings, and we heard a lot of that confidence in their interviews. Mm -hmm. But then last week, they had two huge losses, one to LMQ, which was in the fastest game of the split, and then to CLG the next day, which was also the second fastest game of that week. So they lost really badly last week. Uh, it was the first time as well that they haven't brushed off their losses. So they may be feeling a little bit shaken here, but we also have to keep in mind, this week they face two teams near the bottom of the standings, and their morale could benefit from an easier schedule. All right, let's get right into this one and check out the starting lineups. On the blue side, it's going to be Curse's time. That means it's Quas in the top lane, dominate the jungle. Boy Boy in mid, cop at AD carry, discussing things with the team, and it's special on support. Yeah. And on the red side, it is Dignitas. Sound Spartan in the top lane, Crumbs in the jungle. Shifter in the mid lane, I'm a cutie pie on AD, and cutie kid on support. Let's see if both teams can kind of break the long game barrier that we've been seeing. Mm -hmm. It's It really has happened with a variety of champions. There are a lot that are being pinpointed, but it just comes down to the fact that teams, again, haven't had that chance to play so far in a late game in a professional setting, and yeah. then it just becomes the you play to not lose situation, and that means nobody's going forward. Yeah, and we also have to keep in mind these teams are one and one against each other in their yep. past games. And if we look at the team's overall play styles, this is actually not a great matchup for Dignitas. Curse is actually a team who plays the early game quite well by and large and then makes a decent mistake. They actually have 15 first bloods in their 20 games they've played this split. And Dignitas is a team that's very bad at coming from behind in games. Right. They're the type of team that is also good early game, likes to run away with things. So this is actually, in the League of Late game we're yeah. having, a game that might be decided early. Such a vice versa between these two. Different things, things that match, things that don't. But everything that doesn't match really, like you're saying, is giving Curse the advantage within this matchup. Dignitas can't hold on to that early lead. That means they're going to be struggling pretty much throughout the entire game to make those plays happen. Seeing not too many mid lane bands themselves coming out from what we've seen. It's a very big variety here from well, AD Carry Jungle and mid. Then on the right side for Dig, they're focused more on the mid lane. Definitely a little bit of a mid lane focus. Last time they played, it was three jungle bands. We saw the Lee Sin, Elise, and Eve all band away. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was a game where I Will Dominate actually started 4 and 0 on Rengar. And it was Crumbs' yeah. Nocturne that ended up out carrying. It was one of those uh, jungle centric games. But a Rengar band comes in here, meaning Elise and Eve are still on the table. Lulu, of course, is a more pri priority pick. Yeah. Surprisingly enough, Lulu was banned seven of the eight NALCS games last week. A huge priority for these guys. Even when Quas did get it, they did lose against Evil Geniuses in their matchup, so they're gonna try to go for it again. Talking a little bit about Dominates Rengar was also something that helped quite a bit in the beginning of the Curse Complexity match that went so long. He played it very well there as well, so Dignitas definitely doing their homework, making sure they hit the key components here on Champion Select. We'll see what they decide to pick out. Right now, just hovering really on something to hover as we wait. Hovering for something to hover. Hover, it is. That's, couldn't have said it better myself. Blitzcrank <laughs> has been picked a few times. Yep. But to little success. First game. Guess what? Time to talk about Nidalee. <laughs> yes. All right, so we have That seen, was easy. Yeah, exactly. We've seen one Nidalee game in the European LCS. That was by Freddy. However, in the North American Challenger scene, I'm talking about like solo queue, not the Coke mm -hmm. Challenger series. Right, right. Nidalee is probably the premier top laner right now as far as the lane bullying goes. Yes. Uh, maybe you pick Ragus against it to try and sustain through, but this is very much within Zion Spartan's wheelhouse. Bully the lane, try and get 1v1 kills, but most importantly, draw attention up to that top lane and make people come after you will be a huge thing for Zion Spartan. So the ladies picked up in Elise and Italy on the side of Dignitas. And Brum is going to be the man so far locked in for Curse on support. We see 
Tristana being picked up for Cop. He's been kind of hedging towards Kog'Maw, towards those late game carries, and he does get the protection from his team, already presented even in their pick, so it could be a very good late game pick for them there. Yeah, Braum is a champion who had excessively Dang, high pick and ban in last week. <laughs> Same with Morgana, so those are just kind of traded support picks. You pick the Braum and then try and counter with the Morg to stop the passive stun from hitting. Not too much going on there and a couple of hyper carries as far as 80 carries are concerned yeah. as well. So, it looks like we're getting the king and one of the queens of late game carry for 80 carries. Morgana picked up, like you said, Kiwi Kid can try to make some plays with that. Now we're gonna see what Curse can actually answer with, leaving Boy Boy always to round out the composition and give himself something that can counter or at least play comfortable and safe against the entire composition. Shifter also waiting for his pick. Somebody who's about to see if Void Boy can kind of take over in lane. Most yeah. mid laners have had a chance to really have their way with Shifter. Especially in lane is one thing. And Void Boy had a very good performance. We got to take a look at this though. Yeah. Something just happened. Absolutely. AP Tristan. It is. In the mid lane for Void Boy. That definitely deserves a few cheers because it's something we have not seen in the LCS at all. Nope. And right. it, becomes, it becomes somewhat of an assassin, too, once you get that power. You're in and out. A few things we have to touch on about AP Tristan. Yeah. Uh, in mid lane, it's actually an incredibly strong laner. Mid laners generally cannot sustain themselves. And Explosive Shot, the active on it, does 110 damage at rank 1, which is pretty much the highest damaging level 1 ability that right. is reliable in League of Legends in the game. Uh, also, one of the things that led to Tristana's relevance as an AD carry was that the ultimate scales with the attack range in the game and all those other great things. So it's a very smooth combo now for the AP Tristana. And it's like we're over in Europe all of a sudden because Zareth is making his way into the North American LCS as well. Try and stay away from that Trist. Adapt and react. We see it happening from Dignitas now. Zareth comes out for Shifter as he's been hovering the Syndra. And like picks of Orianna and the rest, TF, Ziggs, but not this time. Ziggs not even banned out this game, but he decides to go for the Zareth for the safe play, the long range, and it works with the rest of the team. They have some immense poke coming out of the side of Dignitas, so they have to remember to keep that mindset going. Yeah, we were expecting great pick this, we were expecting this uh, AP Tristana. And obviously, Voiboy Boy can still be changing his rune pages yeah. up until now, but as of the 22nd mark in this champion select, that is looking to be like an attack damage Trist in the mid lane. Throw you for a bigger loop. Just trying to shove the lane up with Trist, maybe do an early static shift, do the Wraith camps like we've seen Robert's Tristana swap Very up in the mid lane. Interesting. And then they'd have a double AD carry late game with a Lulu support. I'm not really sure what's happening. Well, let's do a quick check-in on the voting over at LLEsports.com. We may have seen this before. Right now, Dignitas is leading with 70%, but that can all change. Yeah, you can also vote on Twitter by sending the hashtag CRSWin or the hashtag DigWin to the at LLEsports Twitter account. And based on the variety in these picks, just vote for what you want. Yeah. Do you like Xerath? Do you like mid lane Tristana? Do you want to go mid with 80 carries? Do you want to see it succeed in the world? It's all this trickle down. You see it happen in pro play, and suddenly it's acceptable in soul queue. I remember uh, first time you see like a top lane in Italy. Nah, that, that's a bad example. There are things that happen in the LCS well, here, that then become acceptable. Here's in this. Rem I've, now, I can't remember yeah. what game it happened in, mm -hmm. but there was the AP top and an AD mid. And after they got whatever leads that they wanted, they swapped those lanes because those lanes were trying to mitigate AP or AD. And then you had an even bigger advantage on those lanes. So they also yeah. have that option. And I wouldn't put a cat past Curse to try something like that. Well, Boy Boy has started with the boots right there, and you can see he has no ability power at level one, which would be incredibly unlikely if he were to go a Petrist. So the mind games could be large here. The fact that he has heal and not ignite would also tip off Dignitas that he is not an AP Tristana. I bet you he may have won the rune war with Shifter though. I'll check very shortly great. for that to see if Shifter didn't bring any armor. Uh, you can see right there, Shifter sitting on 20 armor, so he was not expecting an AD carry in the mid lane. He was expecting an AP Tristana. This is going to be quite rough for Dignitas. I'm sure there's much communication happening now at least that Crumbs may have to be looking a little bit, bit to more towards mid so they don't abuse the early damage that would be coming from that. And this is my favorite thing about 
just League of Legends and the LCS Riv, is this is the same patch that the North American LCS was being played on last mm -hmm. week. But it's a matter of time that players can try things out, experiment, and then bring out the North American LCS, especially since both these teams are on decent losing streaks, Dignitas 4, Curse 2. They're both kind of pressed to make a change and try new things. Yeah. Tristana mid, Zareth is something Shifter hasn't played. Zion is now available in the LCS as well, which is another change. But it's all about having time to adapt, and that's a big thing that they're doing here. Well, actually, we're going to lock right into what Dignitas had to say after they saw that Tristana pick. Let's listen in. Is he really what? doing Trist mid? The oh, no, it could be Trist top. I think it's Trist mid. But it's Trist no, mid. He's been it practicing Trist. So Just little, as much confusion as us there. A little bit of homework there. They did know that he's practicing it, so they're yeah. waiting. But was he practicing AP and now running the AD still? There's, yeah. there's the variation there. We'll have to see. Starting off this game already very interesting coming into week nine. We see some variety out of North America taken after the Zareth from Europe. And a little bit of play here. We see Tristan and Mifford. Boy, boy. It's going to be interesting. I've actually had some discussions with Kobe about maybe why we're seeing more Zareth. And one of the big things is we're just seeing champions fight each other with increasingly longer and longer ranges. Uh, and Zareth is pretty much the maximum range you can get with how far his ultimate is. You can't get any farther range than Zareth mid, so that's what Dignitas is doing. It fits Shifter, the guy who likes to sit in the back of team fights. Absolutely. And just poke through damage. Sit in the back. It, there's kind of the variation of what mid laners like on hits, what mid laners like skill shots. And Shifter's a skill shot kind of guy, so Zareth falls right into that wheelhouse for him. He should be hitting most of everything, we'll say right now. Pretty good we'll pick against Trist, honestly. Yeah. yeah Very is. difficult for Boy Boy to get into the engagement range of Shifter. So that explosive shot harass will be really hard for Boy Boy to land. It was funny. We were talking about a little and listening to Dignitas, but it seemed that there, since these picks happened and teams were just coordinating off a of champion select, there were really no deep wards, nobody wanted to invade. Everybody was like, all right, we're starting with this strat. That's what we had in mind, not to invade. So even with this, they're kind of holding steady. They didn't want to try too much. Yeah, all this fun stuff in Midland. We haven't even talked about Nidalee so far. So Zion Spark, yeah. Doran's Blade start. You can see he's also going That's true. AD Nidalee, just looking for the split push. Uh, a lot of traps in that top lane as well to maybe just make it more difficult for Dominate to venture up towards that top lane. Zion definitely going to try and push Quas in a little bit. These top laners, just aside from the champions, do have very distinctive styles. Yeah. Zion's the type who really just wants to one-on-one -on -one and create as much pressure as possible, whereas Kopp definitely seems like the type of guy who just wants to stay safe yeah. above everything else so he can have a team fight impact. That's why we right. saw Quas with zero deaths in an 80-minute game last week. Playing very safe, but also having an impact. Something... We actually heard recently, coming from an interviewer, Shifter also doesn't die as much, but does he have a big impact? It's kind of yeah. like he plays almost a little too safe. Maybe the range of Xerath will come in on that play, but we will have to see what comes out of that in Italy and Lulu lane. We're going to have to track the CS in the mid lane. As well, Shifter yeah. As well, because we were it's looking going down. at the numbers over the week. Uh, obviously, Shifter, highest KDA in the North American yep. LCS. Fewest deaths for a mid laner. But as far as his laning is concerned, it is by far the weakness in his game. For some context, uh, we track a lot of average CS at 10 minutes amongst mid laners. Right. Xiao Wei Xiao is the highest in the LCS of everyone with 85 CS at 10 on average. On average, yeah. Shifter's sitting around 73, which isn't actually a very damning stat. It's the fact that Shifter's opponents average 85, which is the same as Xiao Wei Xiao average right. in a given game. So pretty much everyone laning against Shifter gets the CS average of the best mid laner in the North American LCS because Shifter doesn't actually pressure against his opponent's CS very well at all. Right, being pushed into the turret right now. Kind of indicative of that Tristana play, so it's going to be a little tougher for him in these early games. We can already see almost get a 20 CS lead right now. And Voidboy is going to feel very strong about this play. We all know he is someone who will go in and out of the fight without any fear. He was hovering on that Akali. And I I can see him playing this Triss somewhat just like it if he gets enough power in the game above everybody. 
Boy used to love playing solo lane Ezreal as well, way back yeah, in the day. That's right. And especially being a top laner transplant into the mid lane, he is the type of person <laughs> little aggression. who can just fit in with different style of champions in the mid lane. Honestly, his mid lane instincts aren't the same as the other mid laners because he has been there for a much briefer amount of time than the other North American LCS mid laners. But Tristana, as far as adapting, puts him more on an even playing field because who lanes against an 80 Trist in the mid lane? Yeah, and it's incredibly hard to gank too. You haven't seen Crumbs even try to put a finger on the mid lane. Boy's just gonna be hopping right out of there. But then again, Dominate hasn't been pushing anything either. Both teams do have that champion set for a late game, especially with what Boy Boy's bringing in the AD department. So they're gonna go the, ahead and just stay steady. The amount of damage that Curse will be able to put out in the late game is rather absurd, as long as they can stay safe. It'll be really tricky, right? Mm -hmm. Double 80 carries that are very squishy. If Shifter gets fed, those 80 carries are just going to get blown up yeah, by the long-range artillery shots of Xerath. So if Shifter gets going, it'll be a spectacular move. They're trying to catch out deck special here, though. Shoot it! Oh, they almost getting it. They throw down a ward. I feel like they had the movement at the time, and it would have been a good counter game from Dominate. He was hovering as well. So we get a ping in the mid lane. Looks like it's time for the blues is what they're pinging. Yeah, Shifter just farming away. They can see him taking the blue, so they know exactly Perfect. where he'll be coming back in with that nice, deeply placed ward. You can see Boy Boy starting his way towards a static ship as well, but Avarice Blade just for even more farming. Right. It gives him almost no immediate strength, but he can do this because Shifter really isn't providing any type of harassment on yeah. Boy Boy. He is freely farming in this lane. See a lot of Tristanas do that from Arbor Dice to Vasily in the bottom lane, or really when we started seeing her for extra gold, and then pop the static shiv, and you have full control over the lane push. Mm, check See? the boards there. Crumbs a little early on this, but he still will have help from the spiders and the rest of Dignitas in the bottom lane. So, special good thinking. They'll at least have the timer on this. Yeah, and a nice move down by Shifter as well, just to have more people in the dragon area. That will cost him about half a wave weight, of minions. Yeah. And it was also because Boy Boy with just the Avarice Blade, he doesn't have any kill pressure. It was a very smart move by Dignitas as a team to force an objective right there. It's one of the things about having Tristan made. It's not that big of a threat either towards the early part of the game. Not much is going to come from it. Dominate, getting to see now. Careful. Crumb should be all right here. A little bit of hover from Shifter as well, but it looks like it's Boy Boy hovering first. Jeez, and they no help be one Crumbs. here. No. Unbelievable Ooh. right there that not only did no one go up for Dominate when he helped the pink ward, Crumbs was just all alone on his buff. No Nidalee collapse, no Xerath collapse. And then Crumbs, instead of running away immediately, waited until it could be yeah. stolen away from him. Just a pressure disadvantage from Dig. No lane was able to assist. I can see Shifter not wanting to roam. He's got a nice juicy new blue on him that he doesn't want to give up, but Zion had full reset lane in the middle on Siege minions. He could have gone. We'll see if they can make up for a bit of that. Dom Dominate getting himself under the skin of Dig here around nine minutes. That's all they have so far, not a huge lead. Zion Spartan though, you can see him getting his 1v1s back and forth, takes a turret shot to the face as he gets a little too aggressive and actually loses out on that trade. Yeah, that Nidalee versus Lulu matchup will be very interesting to track through here. They're kind of just two big time lane guys. There's no one to stop that special from getting that ward. <laughs> Just two big time lane bullies. Yeah. Uh, kind of maybe canceling each other out a little bit, and then it will all be about who can have the greater impact. One really curious thing there is Boy Boy went back to base just to buy a pink ward. He wasn't low on health or mana. He really didn't need to go back at that point. But now with the red buff, I wonder if he's going to be trying to make a move. He's sitting on a lot of potential. Uh, gold there, still on 800. Couldn't complete a static ship, didn't finish any components of his Z. Right. Just stocked up on health potions and uh, got that pink horn. Game even across the board. We can see her at the 10 minute mark and they're around averages, right? Yep. Boy Boy has 88 right now, Shifter's around 73. So yeah. again, just just loses saying. by 10 about every game. See if the map pressure can be made up here. Dominate. Now using Crumbs' is red to come in from the backside. Oh, throw oh, down the yeah. Agony's embrace, and they're going to take that red, and they're going to give it over. Kiwi Kid goes down, but the kill goes to the top. Very nice shot, getting the AD carry going. 
Yeah, it actually seemed like they could have chased after Amakuti Pie, but they burned the flash and then decided yeah. to kill Kiwi Kid, so they'll get Amakuti Pie on the next game, most likely. A very immobile AD carry, and Kogma probably the most vulnerable once his flash is down. So a double win there for that curse gank. Again. Yeah. Curse picks up first blood. That's now 16 of the 21 games. This split in the LCS, they have gotten that. And it's really good thinking by them. We see Void Boy pushing in Shifter in the mid lane. Quas has Zion somewhat on the run. They're having enough fights. So go affect a lane that could be big in the late game. Affect I'm a cutie pie and Kiwi Kid, and that's what Dominate did. Good moves by Curse to get themselves ahead. 11 minutes 30 on the clock right now. You see a lot of quiet time for these two in the top lane. Zion Spartan's just making sure he's safe. You can see he's trying to get that lane a bit frozen so he doesn't get too close to the turret. Spectral picked up over by Crumbs. A little bit of spike in damage here as now they're going to try to push back, especially in cops, so they can't get anything out of that kill. Didn't work too well. Interesting move there by Crumbs. He's really not a, even attempted to aid his solo lanes this game. Yet he's not farming at an amazing pace either. He did secure the one dragon for Dig. Uh, he's a jungler who's been struggling a fair bit lately. He loves to play that supportive style of jungle, which when you fall behind leads to some very poor looking right. games and it looks fantastic when you're ahead. Definitely trying to tunnel this bottom lane ahead this match. And it is giving them the turret and the dragon, so his attention spent has given them an edge in this sector of the map. Gonna keep an eye on how they keep Cutie Pie farming here. Yeah. It's gonna be difficult now with him out a turret. He might be having to share with other lanes. Let's just see how that goes in stealing up camps. Cause like we said, Crumb's behind as well. He's gonna have to start feeding even more to the outside. The static ship rush on Boy Boy. Yep. Exactly what there we've seen is. from Robert X Lee's bot lane Tristana. This time on the mid lane with Boy Boy, he'll be able to take mid lane. Enemy wraiths as they're going up to now, his own wraith camps going to be a whole bunch of CS they're getting through the Boy Boy here. And you can see Shifter, not really forced, but he is still going for the Athenes. He wants to get that in there, and then he will get his armor, but he's trying to bypass it early and get to that as soon as possible. Hasn't hurt him. He hasn't gone down for it just yet, but he's playing very, very safe. And we see that blue once again. Ooh, two in a row. On Boy Boy, getting him a little bit low. Yep, that blue is really going to start coming in big. Here comes the skill shot prowess that Shifter loves to be playing. This is when he would be throwing out all the bombs. Let's see. He's got his regen, and I guess the magic resistance, if you will. But it's not helping out so yeah. much. That's a great sound. It's a new, it's a new like, favorite sound. Shield break. Blocking things. It's nice. Not so much the jacks on a turret, but, you know, you can get what you wish for you. Moving. You can see they're hoping Nothing. to catch Shifter while he's shoving the lanes. At this point, uh, they're both such wave clear machines that they're pretty much just trading 6 CS per wave. The big thing is about the dragon respawn here. Uh, that's why Eve and Trist were looking for those yep. openings. They were trying to clear out potential pink wards. They didn't catch that ward on the outside. Now an even more obvious ward, but Crumbs has been a long ways away for the dragon respawn. A missed timing for sure by Dignitas right there. Crumb's just not timing yep. his recalls adequately. Very nice done, Curse, to take back the second dragon. We've seen a lot of times that they would be the risk averse team, not really wanting to try for it, saying we're all right with what we're doing, and those are okay to go by the wayside. And towards the late Whoa. game, that'll hurt. Zion Spartan, a little back and forth with Quas in the top lane. Hello. Oh, boy, boy goes in. I don't think he used his. He did use his ultimate. It got repelled. Crumbs tries to get out on that one. Dominate goes in. The lockup from Shifter. Dominate's going hard on this, and he just gets dropped down. Shifter's ultimate from close range. <laughs> one for one, back and forth. What a fight. How does Shifter use Jairus ultimate? Point blank. But he gets the kill on the high will dominate right there. The repel is what created the window, so Death for Crumbs creates a kill for Shifter. And since Cutie Pie's in that mid lane, maybe the mid turret as well. Very close. Cutie Pie oh, hasn't man. really focused. Any shots? A nice dodge on the Glacial Fisher for the Void Puppy. He stays nice and safe. Dignitas answer back a little bit there. Very nice. It's going to be a tough one to hold, though, especially with all the ranged poke and just stuff Dignitas throws onto the map. Bulldog yeah. can't get in range to auto attack those minutes. Do they have Siege? Yes, they do. Yeah. I mean, you look at Dignitas' composition, it's almost a perfect poke comp. 
them. Zion Spartan will still have spears if he does decide to group up with this team. Nearly impossible to catch. Zareth is the absolute largest siege mage you can get in the game. Kog'Maw is ultimate as well. Incredibly long range Pokemon. Yeah. They are built to siege up if they can get into that phase. And I love that you, usually you'd see Janna back in the day. I love the use of Morgana now. A lot more power, a lot more control for the team to continue the fight, not disengage. And Kiwi Kid, he's he'll get mobility boots and want to flash in and engage a fight. We've heard him in the all chats. Always great to have it on an impact player as a, like himself. Also, Zion Spartan, he's gonna be building up the Triforce for us. So we're getting double Triforce. Oh, he's a little bit low, but it's hard to kill in Italy. We just want to delay. Yep. Good delay. Teleport's up. They'll be able to get back to lane quite quick. Turret. But yeah, but they're gonna get the turret with three up top. Nice juke by Cop, but double flash, but Kiwi Kid preemptively sees it oh. coming. Just on the outside, Crumbs was not there. Looks like he wants to go under. He actually gets caught to blow the summoner heal as well. So this is going to be working out quite it's well for them. It's a grid as well on the big rocket. I'm sure he would want that red buff, but unfortunately, Crumbs repels away with it. They do get top turret for all that run around, though. Yeah, out of sync right there. Yep. Kiwi Kid burning everything to try and get caught down. Meanwhile, the farm continues. Curse playing a big time farm game right here. Hoping that that double AD is enough in the late game. It's really going to depend on how well Dignitas can land these poke shots. The Xerath is a fantastic pick against the double AD as far as keeping them out of range. But if they ever have a window of weakness, yeah. and I will dominate, can get a flank around behind them, Dignitas' defenses are going to get completely shredded through. They have five squishy champions. You can see two Trinity forces. There's right. not a tank item in sight. Right. Like the aggressive said, build for wasn't Elise, armor. not going for the Ancient Golem, instead going for the damaging Elise yeah. build. They're setting up their glass cannons, that for sure, that's for sure. As long as they don't make that one risky play that really puts them behind. We've seen even Skara after game say, did you guys feel you were that far behind? Was that the play that needed to be made? So maybe Dignitas has righted those wrongs that they made in the past. Not going to have a history repeat itself scenario. Shifter gets back to blue. He's had that instantly every time. Still down about 15 CS in the mid lane, but now it comes to those poke game initiations we've been seeing. That CS difference isn't really what's going to cut it in these fights. Well, if they can hit the skill shots, we've already saw Boy Boy headstrong dive into that Wraith area and try to get a kill onto Crumb. So he'd probably do that in, in even a bigger fight with Quas's Wild Growth to help him out. We'll see actually split push from Boy Boy now. Yeah, that's what the Static Shiv will do. Yep. Cop is the AD carry of the team for now. Uh, Voiboy Boy will be a bigger AD carry later. They have two resetting AD carries in a sense. So if fights start going Curse's way, they will definitely yeah, be able to that's finish. a good call. I didn't even think of that. Yeah. Get excited to bust the rocket jump. And they're both farming very well. They'll both hit their items. It's just a matter of time, and especially Curse, the team that's been going to late game so much, says, why don't we just pick a couple of hyper carries? Yep. Well, because the other team has a 5,000 range mage that can kill them both. <laughs> we'll see. We see Crumbs going straight for that haunting guy's second. We heard Dexter previously talking about that, giving the health you want and the penetration you'd get from rushing the Sork Pen Boots. So getting that in there for a little bit of his safety, but these guys still very squishy, as we were saying before, throughout their current builds. 42 seconds on Dragon. This is going to be great pressure from Dignitas. Hoping to blow a few summoners or alts here to make that a better contest for the objective. Hit that pink ward. This is very important for Dig. How they can set up around this Dragon. How much split push pressure Zion can create. And whether or not Dignitas can land poke as Chris funnels towards the Dragon Pit. This next Dragon will have a substantial impact yep. on the overall gold value of this game. Dignitas not getting any poke down while Curse is clearing wards is a small loss in time. This vision battlefield is something Dignitas can only hold through poke. Because if something can sneak past them and get initiation, they're done for. And they have it everywhere. Usually you'd be waiting for your Nidalee here, and then the other team wouldn't do Dragon because you could just keep throwing spears. But they can throw everything they want. Cocoons, yeah. dark bindings. Getting a siege team prep the dragon is the easiest way to get collapsed on. However, Zion <laughs> is trying to create a 5v4. This is a dangerous take by Dig. Yeah. They do not want to corner themselves in the dragon pit. 
They, they are trying vision. to collapse in on Curse here. If they can land enough poke, it'll be an advantage. This has got to be a fight. Cop and Voiboy in the buddy system right now. That's going to be a lot of damage if they can start opening up. They are going to start on Crumbs. He gets hit a few times. Zion Spartan dives in, but he misses everything and gets an instant exhaust. Very well played. Whoa. There's Voiboy going aggressive. A few shots, not a crit. Oh, come off, though. We're the off with the vision. Oh, 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 he gets a repel, and it also goes past Zion Spartan in the bottom lane. Voiboy now is going to hit up too much. The flash attack coming in from Shifter, but he misses. Summoner heals are still up on both sides to be used now. Shifter's holding on to his, but it looks like both teams back up and Dominate grabs the dragon. I gotta say, I would hate to be our camera operator in this game with all the monstrous two or three thousand range skill shots shooting around. It's so difficult to follow. Nobody dies in that fight because both teams are very long range and squishy. A missed initiation by X-Special, a dodged rocket by Crumbs to prevent the resets. If that thing hits, all hell would have broken loose for Dignitas yep. because they would have gotten chased down. But Curse gets the dragon at the end of the day and a small edge. Curse picking themselves up, put themselves in the lead after such an even game throughout the lanes. The rotation down from Zion Spartan there was thwarted by the teleport in from Quas. So we'll see if Dig can make a play off of that now behind in gold. We said once Dig falls behind, that recuperation process becomes yeah. very difficult. It is a tricky thing for Dignitas. They are not the type of team to come from behind. However, Curse's weakness as a team as well has been making those Get going for a little critical much. mistakes and then just falling downhill after that. But this is kind of the game you would expect from Curse vs. Dignitas, even though Dig is a team at the higher end of the standings. We mentioned before the game, it's not a good matchup for them because Curse is a type of team that gets a lot of first bloods, creates a lot of early game edges, and Dignitas is usually the team that needs to be winning the whole game in order to win the game. Such a big Lulu now. The Morello Namacon and the Athene's finish. It's going to be shutting down the Primal Surge that Zion's going to be healing his team with. Very nice play there. As well as keeping Quas a nice split push controller against Zion Spartan. Level 14 to 13 in those lanes, but they'll probably stay quite even as they trade CS back and forth. Pink and Ward, the Pink Ward of Pink Wards. That's all right. Very, it's not very That one just fell out of his pocket. There was a hole. He didn't, he didn't mean to place that. It will be tricky for these guys to be getting farm in this game because we're in one of those very rare situations where every outer turret in the game is down, but no one actually holds a pressure advantage on the map. Right. Got to get forward wards in. So you got to be very cautious about where you go, and the warding becomes even more important. Look at all the unspent wards in the inventory of Dignitas. A lot of sight wards have built up. They're trying to get their position in, but because they are that poke comp, it has to be very slowly and carefully. If they walk in to a brush that is not warded, immediately Curse closes into combat range and would be able to capitalize. It looks like Dignitas is trying to get something out of this forward push. They're not going to leave here without you at least set up getting a, siege. a turret. Yeah. Zion is split pushing very well against Quas. You can see in those side lanes he has been slowly whittling down the battles. It doesn't show in CS, but just on the average position of where Zion is in the lane, he has a lot more pressure on the map. And this is exactly what Dig wants to do with the rest of their Siege comp, is land some Xerath shots, get some Bio Arcane Barrages in. And if a Dark Binding lands on a low target, it should mean death. Wouldn't be surprised. Exactly stuff like that. A few yep. more of those and Dig gets that mid turret. They play this perfectly. Both AD carries are waiting on just the same amount of time for their summer heal. Cop would love to have that, but without an engage, he can safely walk back to the turret. He'll be able to come back. No home guards for anybody just yet. So these attacks do buy Dignitas a little bit of time, but they just don't have the wave yet to pursue that turret. Zion Spartan giving Quas hell in that top, in the bottom lane rather. Neither of them are getting anywhere. Trying to take little small chunks of the turret. <laughs> Dignitas trying to take bigger chunks of this mid turret. There we go. Curse just can't get healthy. Look at all this stuff that Boy Boy has to dodge around. They're trying to engage, but they're pretty low for this. Oh, it did not seem like everybody was on the same page for that one, but it did 
also seemed like Dominate just wanted them to disengage with the way that Chris yeah. did follow up then. Rule 1A of playing against a poke comp, though, is never let them set up a siege. Right. Because as soon as they get one person low, you're always in this constant catch-up of someone being in base and a 3v4. While you're waiting in base, another person gets chucked down, and you get another 3v4. And that's what we saw right there. They came back, Boy Boy was at half health, which meant the follow-up of the initiation would have been fatal. And the turret goes to Dick. A little damage on the cop. They take the turret down. Zion Spartan has proved useful in the bottom lane. He's only about 10 CS behind Quas right now. Those two would love to start participating in these fights. We'll see if they get there once the AD carries start getting their finalized items. Still quite far behind here at 26 minutes. It seems like it's been a bit of a fast game in map movement, but things that players are gaining and going back and buying. Usually we see two or three items per, per carry. Not this game. Very slow and weighted. Not the kills you would be used to seeing. Right. But it's these long-range artillery shots that Dignitas has, as well as just a really close fight at Dragon that very easily could have turned bloody. Speaking of which, 40 seconds True. and the ward control begins once again. Very like eerie river for these guys. Yeah. Any corner they go around could be a dark binding in death. Summoners are up on both sides. Oh. Oh. Fancy feet. The amount of stun that comes out of both Shifter and then Kiwi Kid, and then you can hit Dyke Cocoon is absolutely amazing. I Man, could really, if you didn't get a TF, or uh, Zareth, I figured you could get a TF in this as well and just keep it going. Start yeah. initiating with that. So many possibilities for the comp with this much long range. Curse, Curse. looking to force. They're yep. hoping that they don't get poked down during this because if they get hit by a few too many shots, they will be done for. But if they get a clean initiation now, they might have an edge. Oh, not no. from a special. Not even the exhaust is there to be used. This is going to be Dignitas getting a catch that they wanted. And you can see what the consecutive crowd control looks like when they lock it down. This, Listen, all right, goes over. Death cap on a shifter and not a shred of magic resist on X special. That's what happens. Against this yep. super long range comp from Dig. Die before you can do a thing. If you get caught out. They need a lock into the Iron Solari from probably I will dominate on this team. That'd be a great idea. You could definitely thwart off a Zareth ultimate or even the finalizing living artillery. Curse trying to gain back a bit of their jungle. Dignitas doing what they needed to pull themselves back into the lead. Both teams wavering a bit, so really not in anybody's favor all just yet, all just uh, at this time. Got the first outer set of turrets down and then it seems like they can't get past it. Dignitas very patient on being able to set up that kind of siege poke we just saw. Even though they let, or Curse let them do it. See if they can get that back towards the top side of Baron. It's just going to be so tricky for Curse. How do you beat that composition? You have to find flanks at this point. You either have to split push them, which is hard because Zion Spartan is probably the best split pusher. Uh, but you need I Will Dominate to find sneaky areas and X Special to somehow land an ultimate on anyone. Really, if it's Kog'Maw or Zareth, you're pretty much okay with it because of how quickly they would die. As far as defensive itemization goes, Dignitas can't build defensive itemization. They're all trying to do damage from their glass cannons. Yeah. It's gonna make for very interesting fights when a few shots will kill everybody on the map from these AD carries. Not quite to that point just yet. When these teams have played, the times have been 32-48 and 32-30. 18 seconds apart for these game wins. Curse has taken one, and Dig has taken one. A couple of fast games. This one will probably be a little longer. Yeah. The way this game is unfolded in front of us. Still thinking about how fast X Special died there. That's going to make Curse very, very scared. Of yeah, they're wary. Where Dominate is. He's hoping 
that he's in position. He actually is right now to get it close. That's one. Can they get the Buster shot out? The Blast coming in. The Fisher misses everything. Special's now caught up in the Soul Shackle. Boy Boy is able to take down Kiwi Kid, but the AD and the AP are still on the move. Cutie Pie tries to fire back. Kathy in surprise comes out. Shifter again using the close range ultimate of his on Zarin because everybody's in his face. Cop fires into Zion Spartan, but he's They're got enough to take it. They have and a double AD like. carry right now, but they are very low down. Gonna try to turn the game health. around. Oh my oh god. Man. This is scary. They Cop have about a thousand HP target. between themselves or just a bit more. Zion Spartan can definitely get food for dinner on this one. If he can start going hard, he hits one. A great chompers right across the entryway towards the blue buff of Curse. And it looks like Baron is stopped. Zion Spartan coming up big in the solo objective. Yeah, that fight was exactly what Curse wanted. It wasn't perfect in execution, but it's exactly the type of play in the end, absolutely. In the end, Those and you kills. saw it. As soon as they could close on a Dignitas, Dignitas immediately tried to run away and couldn't deal damage while running away. Therefore, just had no tank presence, and the reset started to come in for Voiboy and Cop, which was deadly for Dig. What an awesome game coming in for everybody to go Soul Glass Cannon, pretty much Quas and Dominate here, trying to put a little bit of defense on themselves, but that's just in their natural build. We also see Kiwi Kid coming out with the Zanyas, trying to make plays as well. Void Staff completed by Crumbs. Even more Glass Cannon trying to get the kills immediately. And it looks like it's going to be time for that Baron. Two minutes on Dragon. They're going to be here dancing for a while. Looks like Quas is going to have to go down and consider Zion Spartan in the bottom lane. None of them have Teleport, though, so this could be a 4v4. Absolutely. It's the fear of Owl Dominate. It's really if he can get the flanks on. Like right now, Dig is actually caught in a pretty dangerous spot. Oh my god, spot. they're so They're pinched. trying to get the initiation on Dom, but they're getting flanked in. Oh! Kiwi burns everything. Kicked in the mouth. That was not good. Boy, oh, they got get away. He pulls the vision over, can shift her in the stun. He got the stun, it's the max range, which means it's the longest time. Dominate goes down. He had no idea, he couldn't move. The chase oh my continues God. too. Oh, Locking man. down the living artillery. Blue buff Give me a fourth one. He's not in range. Oh my God, More it catch. locked up even more. Still trying to go for the fight. You see the repel come up, but Crumbs couldn't match anything and he couldn't fall back down on an opponent, which really stopped the engage coming in there from Dignitas. But they are picking up so much ground. Little catches here. Now turning towards Baron, 32 minutes in. Yeah, and they're so low. Curse is so low for this, despite not having jungle pressure. An initiation is going to be tough. Where's X Special's ultimate? Let's watch. Whoa! He has to jump it out. Zion Spartan's going for Boy Boy. He flashes over the wall. That leaves Zion now apart from the fight. They're Ooh. trying to spread Curse thin and all of the commotion now. A real struggle here for Curse as they regain control of what's going on and stop Baron. But they need to make a move after this. What a stressful game. All of Dignitas going back to base. They took a little bit too much. And the double 80 carries plus Lulu are pushing oh, them in. Man. Try and get some objectives back. The attack speed increase, just passive, coming from Jinx. And then the rapid fire from Boy Boy. Turrets don't stand a chance. No, that's pretty much the two best attack speed boosts in the game for 80 carries. Those guys are the ultimate turret killers. And guess what? Gold's even. Play the Baron game. Again. Back to even Stevens. What a game. I like it. Week nine starting off very well. Dragon is up. There is an edge here because Void Boy could hop in the back of the Dragon Pit, take it down without mm -hmm. too much risk, but that would open up Curse for a little bit of poke. It's just a matter of whether vision control is bluffed out by Curse. If they pretend like they have five minutes behind them, the control will be much higher. Shifter once again, picking up the blue. Attack range increase coming into play here for Boy Boy. Level 16 on Tristana. And Curse is going to safely move away from Dragon. More gold in their favor, a bit of a lead, but we've seen those leads quickly. Just turn back in Dignitas' favor with a quick fight. Yeah. This... This game is very interesting. You can see teleports down in top laners. They're actually doing the split push game again. Full magic pen build from Crumb. So yeah, he honestly still going. has a lot of burst for himself if he can catch the right target. He hasn't cared about being tanky at all because a one-man spider tank doesn't do too much for them. But honestly, that's like two or three shots from an AD carry at this point. Yeah. Yeah, before he was repelling out things. Now it's not gonna... Oh, special gets locked Whoa. up just in the end. 
That's the dark oh, binding Whoa. as well. He's out of the Special fight. could get hit. They hit Braum again. One of the biggest safety members for these AD carries. If they can get him, they can pretty much walk anywhere. It's just too much artillery for Curse to deal with. They got that one fight because Dominate made it into a clever spot, but right. if we're looking at advantages, Dignitas has so many of them. Again, though, that squishy team at Baron, a lot of damage to life for Curse. It's a matter of if Dignitas can catch him as they come in. Gonna be shots still so coming in. They're kind of stuck inside the pit. They have to be there for Dominate right away. The Summoner heal comes off. They're still trying to take down Baron. 5,200 HP on it, 4,300 now. It's going down quite quickly, oh. but now Baron's starting to heal one for one on each side, and Kiwi Kid limps away. And oh, by the way, Quas just killed Zion Spartan yeah. while well, all that was happening, so that's kind of cool. Curse did hold that off because the poke of them was still enough. The right. zap by Cop got them low enough that Kiwi Kid had to back away, and they weren't willing to risk the get it sighted slash rocket jump resets. There's so many squishy things in this game yeah. that the fights are just remarkably swinging. Notice how neither AD carry went last Whisper because they know nobody on nope. Dignitas is going to be building armor. <laughs> you quickly hit tab and you figured, I love that ward, by the way, uh, that you hit tab and you see the fact that nobody has armor in this game. And you're going to be able to pretty much change it with one or two shots. If it's a crit, make it two shots. Jeez, look at the damage Boy Boy takes. As the teleport gets burned, that's huge. Zion still has his teleport. Quas does not. That could very well swing this game. That exact interaction right there. Cutie Pie low on mana is the worst thing in the world, but definitely hurts a lot of potential of Kogma. So we'll see if they can get him all healed up before they push on to anything. Home guard still not coming out yet. All the money in the game, no matter what, is going into damage right now. These guys are full Forest balls to the wall. Bloodthirster picked up by Boy Boy so he can keep a bit of safety because these fights, they are going a little bit longer than usual. Yeah, Boy Boy's been the one getting poked down the most. Yeah. So trying to get that little bit of pre shield. As long as he remains in combat. Uh oh. All right, all right, all right. They're rushing it down. They got to see that one. Oh my back. gosh. They're just daring crumbs to come in for a steal. That's not really a game they want to be playing against a poke comp like this. They don't even have to enter pit. Look how much damage they can do from They're the They're trying to force the teleport from Zion on a match. 2,500. Poke in doing so. 2,600 on Baron, and they back off. Curse teasing Dignitas now, trying to dispute this Baron. This is just the most dangerous game <laughs> that Curse could be playing, all to get Zion Spartans teleport out. They succeeded. I feel like Zion actually came in a little preemptively, but yeah, the Baron was a 2600. Crumbs could have stolen. He's on a lease. That's yep. a very real possibility. Oh, Whoa. that's one shot. That was almost a bad spot to be in, but you see the shield help. Whoa, Cutie Pie coming in with late game Kogma. Two shots, half health, boy, boy. He can still sustain himself back up. He's going to be the one to take it. He said, let me shoot these. I need to live. Dignitas is going to back up. They're going to give Curse a little bit of breathing room, but we're just going right back to Baron. It's not going to be any waiting. You do not want to tango without McCutie Pie's Cogma in close quarters. It's a scary, scary man right there. Boy Boy thought to take him on, quickly thought better of it. Really, as soon as one of these teams gets a couple kills, the Baron is maybe actually, maybe not even taken, if I'm thinking about it. If they Curse can push. get three or four kills, they would just win the game with how quickly they can push with Jinx and Trist if they're alive at the end of this. Yeah. Interesting to see how Dominate will be able to find ways into these fights. Dignitas, they're not the ones really trying to push that Baron down. We saw them doing a Dragon, but like you said, putting themselves in such a tight spot is really bad news bears because they're going to get jumped on. Level 15 for Dominate, same as Crumbs, but he's also starting to get a bit more tank on his build, so he can make those impact plays. They may catch Dignitas in a bad spot here. Yeah, Shifter off. No teleport for Zion. They see exactly where he is, which makes them want to rush this Baron. It does still open them up for a whole bunch of poke. This Baron goes down remarkably quickly, though. How quickly can Dignitas make it? And Shifter's not even in range. It's got to be a steal attempt for Crumbs. He's, He's going in. Go in. He already going into Spider Form. He does not get it. Quas throws a Glitter Lance right through Baron. Goodbye. They say spike it right now, so he cannot. 7 to 5 in 40 minutes. Oh, Curse Shifter. is starting to move through. The red buff hits. He flashes. Oh, the rocket hits. This could be the shoulder of Boy Boy. They're going to keep.
keep going. Kiwi Kids going down. They're going to have eyes on the Nexus after this chase. There's so much health on Zion's part. They need to turn around and go for the base. They so could much just chase win coming out right, right now. now. If they Curse just push stops it. The mid lane. They spend about five seconds too long in that bottom lane. Let's Ooh. see if they can still push this up right now. 40 seconds, 25 seconds, 30 seconds on the death timers. How much damage can they do to these turrets? They have Quas and they have Boy, or rather they have Kot moving in with oh, Boy man. Boy. All the attack speed. This is just a wrecking crew of turret destruction. Curse might take down Dig. This is going to be very hard. Cutie Pie can make the right shots. They're not trying to shut him down. A lot of damage going out to Dominate and it's special. Eyes on the Nexus turret. Three seconds for Crumbs. It's not going to be enough. That's the way the cookie crumbles. Curse drops Dignitas at 40 minutes. What? An unusual game right there. Curse, the mid lane AD Tristana, the team of 80 carries and range damage and resets, gets a couple of them against Dignitas of all teams. Dig tried the poke comp, they tried to change things up, but they got collapsed on a few too many times. They got rushed down at the end. Zion did not yep. have his teleport. And that makes it five games in a row. Where Dignitas has been on the losing side. Curse doing a very good job of keeping their jungle clear. Dignitas, we saw what happened when they had the chance to set up that engage right in mid lane on the second tier turret. It looked bad for Curse. It's like if they do this at every turret, Dignitas is going to walk on through to the win. But Curse was in their jungle, clearing those wards, so the fear of Dominate coming from anywhere was there. They never were able to execute it, but that pressure they created just off the ball was really what helped them to continue pushing out to Baron. And then yeah. the one time you catch the team out, like you said, are they going to go for Baron or are they going to go for the win? Well, they had the win. And well, they yeah, just right, went after, for the win. Right. But you could see how easily it was accomplished by all their AD carries. Yeah. I think the most remarkable thing for me in this game is despite how many close escapes we saw with yeah. Zareth bombs lobbing down on Voiboy Boy the whole time, is that both of their AD carries were deathless. <laughs> it was 105 on Voiboy, Boy, 205 on a cop. And they come away with a victory. A huge way to bounce back from that last yep. week where they lost to both EG and Complexity. Great safety from Quas on that Lulu and special on Braum. Very good play protecting your AD carries across the map. So to hear what the pros thought of that match, let's send it down to Kobe. All right, thank you, Riv. I'm here with Voiboy Boy after their win. Of course, we first have to ask you about this Tristana pick. You guys have been practicing it a lot. What is your favorite part about AD Tristana in the mid lane? Uh, I really like Tristana just because it's a champion that can be really aggressive and you can just like go full out and just like carry a team fight really hard. Like originally when I was watching Vasily play Tristana, I would just see him like rocket jump into like five people and I was like, wow, that's like exactly how I like to play AD. I was like, hmm, maybe I could pull it off mid. And I just started trying in solo queue. It worked out really well started playing it in scrims and stuff, and just brought it to LCS, and I think it worked out quite well for us, so happy with the pick. Yeah, it definitely worked out this game. How crucial is the Braum pick, or how much do you have to build the whole rest of the team around a double AD pick if you want to run Tristana in mid? Uh, so Tristana is pretty versatile. I think building a team comp like the, like the one we had can open up the abilities of, for example, a double AD comp is really good at kiting. Like, you're not going to go out full engage. Like, you're not trying to wombo. You're just trying to kill the same targets, try to kill people in the front. And if people ever get in range, in, in your range of aggression, uh, in both AD carries auto attack range, you can just melt them. So I think our picks just help facilitate the strength of our comp. And playing against Xerath, we're probably going to be seeing a lot more Xerath nowadays. Um, pretty popular all over the world. How does it change your game when you guys are facing all these champions with increased range? And how does it change it when there's so much increased importance on these skill shots that are going to be landing? Yeah, so their poke was really strong. Xerath is a really good pick now. I would expect to see him constantly throughout this week. But we were getting poked down for a bit. Once we got some MR, once we started getting some sustain, it became easier to deal with. Once me and Cop had a decent amount of lifesteal, even though Shifter was hitting a bunch of Qs and he was trying to like ult for her ass and stuff like that, we would just lifesteal it back up and then we'd look to fight uh, while those cooldowns were down. So it ended up being fine. It was a little shaky in the mid game, but once it got late, we just took, took over. All right, and our last question is about the Nidalee in the top lane because we haven't uh, seen that in North America yet. What was Quas's communication with you guys about handling that Nidalee in the top lane, because so many top laners have been complaining about how much of a bully she is, but Quas handled her very, very well. Yeah, so uh, 
people have been playing a lot in Italy in NA mostly. I think it's just a champion we should expect to see a lot more. And it's something that we actually got a decent amount of practice against. So originally, it was like, man, this champion is just crazy. Like, what do we do? But then as Quas played against him more, I think he learned how to deal with it. So I think, I think we've got it on lock now. Well, he's definitely a boon for your team then. Thank you, Voy Boy, and congratulations once again. We are now going to send it over to the analyst desk uh, for another discussion on the game. Thanks, Kobe. Now we want to welcome Aiden Zyrene Moon to the desk to help us break down Curse's win. Now that's a win for Curse after yeah. a pretty underwhelming showing last weekend. Is this us kind of watching them take the reins back and get you know get back into their groove going into the the post the the end of the season? I guess. Yeah, I think they have. It's been the season for for Curse the entire time. Like. They're always almost good enough to be a top team. They've had so many games, even at the very beginning, where they would almost beat all the guys in the top four. Uh, their losses last week is, is just sort of more of curse being curse. It's like, hey, sometimes they just don't show up quite right. Sometimes they just kind of screw things up. But like, I expect to see more of that 3-1 super weak curse. Like, they have the players to do that. They have the shot calling to do that. They have the, the right sort of teamwork and mindset to do that. And it's just kind of like which one shows up. And it's really up to them. Like, you can't predict their, their week to week results. It's up to how they play in a given day. Yeah, I completely agree with that. It's how they play on that given day. And they innovated today. They brought that AD carry Tristan in the mid lane. Voidboy had been playing it a little bit on his stream. Got a little glimpse of how good it was in that mid lane. And you know, Kwasi played at AP top. So it's kind of one of those things where you don't know where it's going to go if they are innovating. Turns out it's mid lane and they crushed with it. And it's on the other team to react to that and come up with a battle plan mid-champion uh, select. All right, well, to, to that point of innovation, we saw a couple other champions make their first showing. Yeah. Whereas in Italy, I wouldn't consider being our first showing, but the reworked in Italy, as well as the, Z as well as the Zareth Freak, talk to me a little bit about those, choice by, those choices by Dig. Sure, so I really liked what Dignitas had set up here because Nidalee is like the premier, the premier lane bully right now. She's like the new Renekton, basically. Um, and that fits Dig's style really well, where they can say, Zion, go do things by yourself, go create pressure. He did have a couple of misplays. That solo death to Lulu was really bad. But um, by and large, this is a good thing for teams like Dignitas, who can rely on the individual play on one side. The Xerath also, and I know Jack talked about this as well, fits Shifter perfectly. I expect to see him play more of this champion. Uh, Xerath is sort of like the new Nidalee, as far as mid laners, mid laners are concerned, where it's like, do you like playing poke champs? Great, here's a poke champ who you know, attacks from very, very far away. The difficulty being that he doesn't have the same escape tools in Italy, so you can actually punish this. Hmm. All right, Zyrene, so when we have a bunch of these poke champions in the game like this, we saw some early bullying going on with the Trisana against the Xerath, but then when we got to team fights, it was just like a basic standoff. So what, what is the cause of that, and what's the solution to, you know, to actually getting into a battle? Well, I told you that it's on the other team to counter it at Champion Select. They had no hard engage. Like Special was really their only ticket into that fight for Curse. And they end up getting it a couple times, and those were very key points. But another thing that I actually want to jump back a little bit to Freak's uh, answer there, mm -hmm. because you talked about the Nidalee. I didn't like the Nidalee in this game. I felt like Zion Spartan was playing, playing a split push game. And against double AD carries Tristana Jinx, they will fast push a base faster than you can split push because of their Qs and their attack speed increases. Also, Zion Spartan built fully split push, Blade of the Ruin King, Trinity Force, not a single armor item on him. He didn't want to be involved in these fights against AD carries, which made it so that he couldn't show up. He couldn't be a force to be reckoned with, and he would have just been destroyed. We saw it in the very last fight, too, where he was a non-factor and just ran away and gave up the base. Absolutely. And we'll take another uh, look at a replay, the final Baron fight, where we'll watch those two AD carries burn down that Baron. Doesn't give any time to respond. Freak, go ahead and walk me through this one. Yeah, so the cool thing about this is Curse have actually done this, and they had no words in this, but somehow this was the exact time that Shifter is taking his blue buff on the other side of the map. So Dig has no way to contest this fight whatsoever. They shouldn't even try once they realize it's this low. The steal attempt, I understand. It's a fine. It's a 50 50 for crumbs. And if he gets it, it's great. But the rest shouldn't be limping in. So if you play this, this fight out, it's crumbs dying for free, obviously, and then like Kiwi Kid's like there by himself waiting for his team to show up, but they have a guaranteed four on five, and the problem is you have a team with a bunch of resets, three of them actually, on every assist, and so they just jump in for kill after kill after kill. And again, it's another situation where this dick shouldn't be here. Yeah, there's a ton of chase potential here on the side of Curse. Um, so is the solution here, obviously, like you said, the steal is fine, you yeah. give up the Baron, keep Zion in that bot lane, because that's one of the impetuses for them going for the Baron to start, was they saw Zion in the bottom lane. Yeah, it's really difficult to sort of play around this. Like, both teams have this weird, like, if you lose vision, you're super screwed. Because we saw things in the random mid game, there was the fourth dragon that went down. Expecial didn't see a, a cocoon come out, and he just dropped. 
He can't, he, his stun, so he can't put the Unbreakable up. He just dies to all the siege, all the, all the poke damage. He will just immediately drop as the main tank on the team. Same thing for Dignitas, though. If you don't see the enemy team, double A to carry, Baron dies in four seconds. And you, out of nowhere, like you've just lost your entire way to play this game. Or if you don't see Evelyn, she flanks you and your, your entirely squishy siege based team falls apart. And, well, Curse had the situation where they didn't see him go for Baron and suddenly it's gone. All right, another question regarding the Xerath, because it's such a new champion. We've seen it a few times in EU and NA. We're watching the middle lane evolve. We're watching the top lane evolve with, uh, with uh, Lulu and Kale and Nidalee coming out in the top lane, things like that. What do the other lanes need to do now to kind of catch up in evolution? How are we going to see those lanes change the other lanes? Zyrene? Oh, we just saw a little bit of that here with the Tristana. Against this double AD composition, like I said, you can't split push. It's going to force you to pick something that's a better team fighter, better hard engage type champion that can deal with this heavy damage. And man, the builds from Dignitas is something I want to touch on too, because, oh man, no, no real stacking of defensive stats at all. When you see one fed Tristana, you're kind of like, all right, we need armor. Even if it's just one armor threat. They went with Crumbs, full magic penetration build there. He didn't have a single defensive item in his inventory. And then Zion Spartan, same thing. So these types of roles, you need to adapt your build, and then that will sometimes affect what is a good build on this champion, and can we take that build to a different champion? When Sightstone was something that was seen in the jungle, it was like, oh, Nunu's really good with that item. Let's start playing Nunu jungle. So these things are types of evolutions that change the dynamic. And you talked about top lane. Gragas top, huge bully in the top lane. You can win it, and then that causes spillover into other lanes. And then how do you deal with that? Because this thing right here with the Tristana, you're not going to roam. We saw no roams to side lanes, which means you can play bigger lane bullies bottom and just win the lane solo if you're just going to have somebody pushing mid. So there's a whole big dynamic, and each lane isn't really its own microcosm, but if it is, it affects other lanes at the same time. Yeah, I actually want to get off on the back of that one because you mentioned the Tristana not being able to roam point. This is one of the things that actually got Dig an early lead was the fact that they got to push aggressively against an Evelyn of all champions. Like, they killed the bottom outer turret because, so one, Morgana's a counterpick to Braum. Braum can no longer do anything in the lane as long as Kiwi Kid's playing properly. You block everything, he's, he's just useless. Uh, so let's basically cog Morgana 2v1 Jinx, which is now an advantageous lane, despite being a Kog'Ma lane. So they took the turret down. They only got punished by one gank. They know Voivoy's not coming. Um, you know, same thing's happened in the top lane as well. Zion Spartan's always pushing. And you talk about the champions spilling over and the fact that they're, no, they're not microcosms. Well, here you go. You see two turrets going down just in the laning phase for Dignity because of things like Tristana mid. All right, well, there's clearly a ton to discuss yeah. uh, regarding the new changes, things like that, and the way that these games will evolve. Luckily, we have a ton of games coming our way to watch that evolution. Guys, thank you for the input. We'll be yeah. back later. Now, there are still more explosive action coming your way. After a brief break, Evil Geniuses will be taking to the Rift to battle it out with Counter Logic Gaming in our second game of the day. The NALCS continues after this. I mean, I'm ready for it. I don't think the people are ready for it. Some dips. Some dips. We know. No. Don't do it, guys. Crumbs tries to get out on that one. Dominate goes in. The lockup from Shifter. Dominate's going hard on this, and he just gets dropped down. Special's now caught up in the Soul Shackle. Boy Boy is able to take down Kiwi Kid, but the AD and the AP are still on the move. Cutie Pie tries to fire back. Kathy in surprise comes out. Seven to five in 40 minutes. Oh, they got Shifter! It's starting to move through. The red buff hits. He flashes. Oh, the rocket hits. It's going to be the shoulder of Boy Boy. They're going to keep going. Kiwi Kid's going down.